if somebody ought to just take a moment and just give the Lord a praise for what it is that the Lord has done in your life. That's good enough for you. I said you ought to give the Lord a praise for what it is that the Lord is doing in your life. Blessed be the God. Who woke you up this morning? God deserves a praise. Who started you on your way this morning? God deserves a praise. Who put a roof over your head? God deserves a praise. Don't sit there like God ain't never done nothing for you. Like God owe you something. Like God had to wake you up this morning. Somebody can say, preacher, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I would have been consumed and thrown away a long time ago. But all for the grace of God. I am here on this morning. God is good. God is wonderful. God is good. I just can't stop saying it. God is good. God is wonderful. Anybody got anything to be grateful for this morning? I know things ain't what, what you want, but guess what? You got more than what you deserve. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. God is good, church. God is good. Now, some of you all that may be watching us online and maybe some that are in here, you looking and saying, what are the folk doing all that for? We just having flashbacks. We just having flashbacks. We just thinking back at a time in our life to where God did something for us. And my Bible said that the redeemed ought to say so. You've been redeemed by the hand of God and God didn't bless you. Ain't nothing wrong with letting somebody know. I'm thankful for what God has done in my life. So guess what? If I'm a little too loud for you right now, if you don't like me saying all this, amen, you might just want to find you somewhere else to sit because I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the earth and be glad. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt. His name together. Y'all got me preaching glory, already. I ain't trying to do all this. Hallelujah. Yes, is I believe. Let my bird and my bird die. My bird has found oh, glory and glory. Singing hallelujah. Well, now, since I let my, all of my bird has well, now I feel better, better so much better, yeah, much yeah. Better. since I, since I, since, since I, I live, all of my burden, my burden, down, my burden, down, said I feel better, so much better, so much better, better. Oh, yeah, now, since I live, all of my burden, my, my burden, down. Said that my friends don't treat me no, no, like they used to have since I left. All of my burden, my burden, down, my burden. Said that my friends don't treat me no, no, like they used to. Well, now, since I left, all of my burden, my Watch out, but I feel, I feel better. Tell your neighbor so much better hey, since I lay. All of my burden, my burden, down my burden. Said that I feel so much better. Hey, yeah, well, now. one out right here. Well, well, I said that I am going home to live. Yeah. Jesus. One of these days, y'all, oh, since I live, all of my burden, my burden, down my burden, said that I am going to live, to live. Jesus. Well, now, Better, so much, so much 
Well, now, since I lay my all of my burdens down, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Glory to God. He yeah. yeah. said, where well, two yeah. or three yeah. are gathered yeah. together yeah. in my name, touching yeah. and agreeing on anything, yeah. he said, there am I in the midst of them. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad to know that God is here, that God is in the midst of us, and that if we need something from the Lord, the Lord has it ready and available to us. What you need, God got it. God got it. He's waiting to give it to us. So good to see all of you that are here on this morning. We thank those of you that are watching us via live stream. God bless you. We know you could have tuned in, stopped by anywhere that you wanted to on this morning. But we're glad that you stopped by here. And if God ever affords you the opportunity, we pray that you would come out and visit us. Because if you ain't heard, God is here. And I don't know about you, but I want to be where the Lord is. We thank all of you that are here that are visiting with us. God bless you. We're so glad to have you here today. So glad to have my mother-in-law uh, here with us this morning. She's in town. Uh, so glad to have her here um, with us. And all of you that are visiting, God bless you. And we're just so glad to have you. Um, now, uh, now y'all been acting all morning like you love the Lord. Um, you've, been, you've been acting like you're glad about what it is that God is doing in your life. Apparently, God is blessing somebody. Uh, so, so I believe that somebody came to hear a word from the Lord on this morning. Is there a word from the Lord? I believe that there is. We'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. And we will begin reading at verse number 5. And we will conclude at verse number 8. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. And the Bible says, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth in Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for our, your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye also be of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed above measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our troubles which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of our lives. May the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. If you would, go with me to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear wise and gracious Heavenly Father, it is indeed we are grateful. Grateful for one more opportunity, dear Master, that you have blessed us with to come and feast at the table of your word. Father, somebody came seeking you this morning. Father, I pray that they'll find you. Somebody came weighed down with the cares of this world, Father, and I pray that you'll lighten that load for them. Father, we can't do anything until you come. So, Father, I ask that you would please hide me behind your cross, that no flesh would take any glory in that that you ought to receive. And, Father, if you grant us these petitions and prayers, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and to give your name the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray that all those that love God say amen. amen. I want to talk to somebody this morning. I believe I'm talking to everybody that's ever been at your wit's end. I want to talk to some people this morning that know what it's like to live your life going through situation after situation after situation. Getting to a point to where you're going to say, Lord, when are the situations going to stop coming? I want to talk to you all this morning about living under pressure. Living under pressure. In my text this morning, 
We are dealing with the Apostle Paul. Paul, he is the epitome of strength. He is a bulwark of faith. Up under his ministry, he has begun to evangelize the final frontiers of Christianity. Having approached the Jews and them largely rejecting him, and even those that accepted, the other apostles were beginning to apostatize. He had found a fruitful place of evangelizing the Gentiles and his ministry was now booming. And because they that are sick need not a physician, but it was booming in the refuse of human pain. He was flourishing in places of idolatry, in places of bigotry, and in places of sexual immorality. His message was well received by broken people who accepted his message but were hard to lead. They followed him on broken legs and the Apostle Paul was a man that was eloquent of speech. He was intelligently fluent. He was intelligent. He was articulate with his words. He was a well-spoken individual. He was respected as a, a sage of his age. He was philosophically astute. He ran around with other thinkers of his era and was respected for his thought. And yet in spite of his intellectual death and his spiritual prowess being so strong that he could stop speaking and walk down the steps and raise a man from dead and go back to speaking and never lose a beat. He was not a wimp. Don't think he was a wimp. He was stoned at Lystra and left for dead. He had been attacked by serpents. He withstood the jail cells and came out. But he said, I finally came to something that was beyond my weight load. I don't care church this morning how strong you are. I don't care how tough you may think you are. I don't care how intelligent you are and I don't care how respectful you are. Sooner or later you are gonna run into something for which you are not ready for. There are people that deal with jobs, that do plumbing work, that deal with pipes and things of that nature and hoses and they have something that's called a PSI rating. It's called the pounds per square inch and, and how much pressure that thing can hold that. If you add more pressure than the PSI says on that object, poof! It's going to burst because of the pressure that it is under. And all of a sudden, it has been rated, all of us this morning have been rated for a certain amount of pressure. Well, preacher, I don't know where that come from. Well, why you keep running around saying God won't put more on you than you can bear? The very fact that there is a limit to what you can bear is an admission that there is a weight load that is too much for you. There is a weight load that is too much, and when it is too much, when it's too much, that's when we really want other people to help us with this load. That's when we desperately want somebody to lift us up, lift this up off of me, and most of the time we reach out to them because we have pressure beyond what we are rated for. And when they disappoint us, it is not the agony of going back, church, Knowing that there are certain things that we can handle, but there are certain things that we need God to help us with. Because we cannot handle them on our own. Might have been how Jesus felt when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Come on, y'all, and go with me. This is too much for me. Will thou watch for me for one hour? How many of you have ever been disappointed because the people you were counting on to watch with you walked off and left you by yourself? And you wouldn't have minded holding the bag, but the bag was too heavy and the pressures were too great. And you can't open up to anybody. And I defy anybody in here this morning to tell me that you are so spiritual that you cannot relate to what I'm saying. Because if you got spiritual, you got spiritual from reading the word of the God. And here is the guy that wrote most of what you read. And if the guy who wrote it said life almost killed me you can't tell me that you are able to say that nothing bothers you if jesus 
who died for your sins, got a weight load so heavy that he begged three disciples, y'all wake up and go through this thing with me. They fell asleep on him and they're not going to tell me that their heart did not hurt because of it. He says, I was pressed above measure. I had more pressure on me than I was able to handle. You'd be surprised, church, at the amount of people in this room right now that got so much pressure on them that your head is literally about to pop off of your shoulders because of the pressure that you are feeling right now. They're smiling, oh, good morning, praise the Lord. How are you doing today? Oh, you look nice and blue. That's a lovely color on you. I have, I love your tie. And nobody knows that the top of your head is about to come off because you are under so much pressure. Life is pressure. Aging is pressure. Love is pressure. And we keep asking for stuff, not knowing that the more stuff you get, the more pressure is going to come. Oh, Lord, I want children. Jesus. Lord, I want children. Not realizing that children are. Lord, I want a husband. But you don't realize that having a husband is going to bring... Don't get me stuck. I'm not even going to say, Lord, I want to have this and I want to have that. Not knowing that all of that stuff brings about pressure. Pressure, church. Pressure. The reason the Apostle Paul was writing Corinth is because they were angry because he wasn't coming. And he wrote them a letter to adjust their expectation to the reality that even though I'm your leader, I've been going through something. Can I tell y'all that even those that serve in positions of leadership go through something? Let one of my elders that don't have any issues in here, raise your hand for me. One of my deacons in here that have never had the devil to try you. Let me show any individual that has made up their mind that they're going to serve God. Any individual that has made up their mind that they're going to live for God. You are facing some kind of pressure. So when you see me down, whether you see my shoulder shrugging or you may see a frown on my face, don't get mad at me. I may need you to pray for me because I may be going through something that I don't know how to get out. Of. The greatest way that you can help a person in leadership is to pray for them. Because any person that has any amount of leadership is under a certain amount of pressure. Everybody expecting you to live a certain way. Everybody expecting you to do certain things, do things a certain way, but they can't even do what they're requesting of you. So you find yourself living under pressure. I need this and I need that. And you're going to need this and, and, and you got to do that. How many people are giving as much as you are taking? And you are up under pressure, and then there's the pressure that comes from the guilt of being under pressure. The guilt of being inadequate in certain areas of your life. And not being enough for all that you took on. The guilt from being tired. The guilt from running on empty. The guilt of being beyond your own strength. In the original language, it is called ectonomous, means out of power. I don't have no more strength. I'm out of power. I don't have any more. Have anybody ever reached a point where you say, I just don't have any more strength. I just don't have any more will to go forward. Don't call me. Don't ask me to do nothing. I ain't got no more. I'm just out. Pressure. Can I be real with y'all this morning? So the more opulent, the more effusive, the more effective somebody is, the more empty you're going to become. You know, my wife's car is full of gas right now. It's full of gas. You know why it's full of gas? 
Ain't nobody drove it. The more you drive it, the emptier it becomes. Y'all follow what I'm saying? If you have never been drove hard, you are empty. And the problem with you is that you know how to work better than you know how to ask God to help you. And let me tell you, church, you can literally burn up around people who love you. It's not that they don't love you, but they would never imagine that the elder could be tired. They would never imagine that mama is tired, that daddy is tired. But let me tell you, every individual, I know we love to walk around, open up our shirt, I'm Superman, I'm Superwoman, I can do it all, I can handle it all, but I wanna put every single one of y'all on notice that there will come a time in your life that something is gonna hit you so hard that it's gonna knock you on your backside and you're gonna be left wondering, Lord, what am I gonna do, Lord? How do I get up from this, Lord? How do I I handle this because you are living under pressure. Now, Peter, Peter, James, John, I need you. I'm going through something. All through the rest of the Bible, you needed me. I healed y'all. I blessed y'all. I taught y'all what you know. I fed you. I protected you. And I made ways for you. This is the one time that I need y'all. I'm going through something. Man, come on and go through this thing with me. Watch with me for just one hour. I ain't asked for two. Just watch for me for one hour. I need y'all. Y'all got my back. I need you to cover me. Because I'm pressed beyond measure. I'm going through the Garden of Gethsemane. And I carried you with me because I thought we had a covenant agreement. And I just figured that if I was there for y'all, y'all would, yeah, come on somebody, y'all would be there. Does anybody know what it's like to give your all for everybody else to be there when everybody calls you, whenever somebody needs you to show up, you are there. But whenever you call, you don't get nothing but the dial talk. I need you. And if I can't count on nobody else, I did everything for y'all. So I just expected to be able to count on you. I didn't take Andrew. I didn't take Bartholomew or none of them. I brought you with me because I took y'all places. I didn't take nobody. I took you up there on the mountain of transfiguration. Didn't take nobody else. I did all kinds of stuff for y'all. I just knew that I would be able to count on you. And the truth of the matter is, church, that when you get to your garden of Gethsemane, you got to go through it by yourself. I said, when you go through your garden of Gethsemane, church, you got to go through it by yourself. Now, the problem is, we want to take all of our cousins and we want to take all of our friends and we want to take everybody in the garden with us. But could it be that the reason you hadn't gotten your breakthrough yet is because you got all of those people around you? And let me tell you, church, sometimes God got to get you by yourself before he can really do a work in your life. Why you want to take people with you? Got one person saying you can't do it. Got another one saying, I don't know why you're doing it. Got another person saying this, another person saying that. But when you go through your garden of Gethsemane, you got to go by yourself. Gethsemane was a place where they grew olives. And it is referred to as the place of pressing. Because that is where they press the oil out of the olive. People living under pressure, you thought people sometimes would never forsake you. People that had a right, you had a right to expect to be there with you, you recognize that they'll turn around and get selfish and say, well, I'm sleeping, so y'all just sleeping over here. They're, they're asleep, all of them sleep. All three of them out there sleep. Could none of y'all stay up for Jesus? They're asleep to my crisis, but want me to be awake for their crisis. 
They act like I don't have a need, but they want me to meet all of their needs. They want me to be there to solve their circumstances, but they act like I ain't got no circumstances. They're asleep to my humanity. They were awake when I was deity, but now they're asleep for my humanity. They were awake when I was walking on the water, but now they've fallen asleep when I really needed them. I'm going to preach this thing today. They, they were awake, church, when I was raised the dead. But when I'm vulnerable to myself, they'll sleep. So I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. And he what? Walks with me. And he, and he talks with me. And he, he tells me that I am his own. And the joy that we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. And when God gets ready to press on you, he's going to press you by yourself. The pressure got so great that Jesus didn't just pray one time. He prayed on three different occasions. Now, Jesus had to pray. How do you think you're going to get up out of this thing without praying? Father, if it be thy will, pass this bitter cup from me. Father, if it be thy will, pass this. I just don't want to go through this. I am tired. I don't want to go through this anymore. I am tired. I don't want to hurt anymore. I'm tired. I don't want to be humiliated anymore. I am tired. They're going to strip me naked. I don't want to go through that. They're going to crucify me. I don't want to go through that. Look, I've helped people. I've healed people. Why do I have to go through this? I didn't complain when you asked them to show me how I was God. But now you're going to strip me and show them my humanity. Father, if it be thy will, don't let me have to deal with this. But nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. And so in the God of Gethsemane, and Gethsemane, as I said, is the place of presence. And they called it the place of pressing because it was where they turned the olives into olive oil. It was there that they crushed the olive to get the oil out. The only way to get oil out of the olive is to press it. For every person in this room who's ever had somebody to fall asleep on them, who's ever poured more into people than you got back for yourself, who's been working at a deficit, who's been burning the candle at both ends, I want to let you know that when the pressing is over, that's when the oil really begins to flow. I said when the pressing is over, that's when the oil begins to flow. There is, there is a glory church that comes out of being under pressure. That comes out of going through some things. Can somebody agree with me and say, preacher, I'm better because I went through it? Can somebody say, preacher, I'm better because I had some pressure? Now, some people in here that ain't never been through anything like that, and some, some, somebody will say, just keep on waking up and saying good morning, and, and something is going to come out. Because I want to let y'all know, if you are not going through some kind of pressure right now, that lets me know you just came out of some pressure, or either some pressure is just over the horizon, but all of us are going to deal with some level of pressure, but I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready for the pressure. I am ready for those times because I know that I have a God that's going to be by my side and the same God that helped Paul to be able to get through his situation is the same God that's going to help me to get out of my situation as well. Living under pressure. Paul said I was pressed above measure. Y'all know what it's like to say, well, I just can't take no more. And then you got to take some more. <laughs> ah, y'all know what it's like to say, I can't do it anymore. Only to, after you get through saying that, have to go do it some more. Living under pressure. 
I want to make a passionate plea for people this morning who are pressed above measure and above strength. And some of you may be even despair of life itself. You need to just stop living altogether. You don't even know when you stop living. Now you're just going through the motions. You feel like sometimes you're just existing. Like you really have no purpose in life. Just going through the motions. Like you just feel like you're robotic sometimes because you're just dealing with so many things. And sometimes, truth be honest, you don't know whether you're going or coming, whether you're going to the left or to the right. Sometimes you just find yourself just being here. But can I tell you, church, God is ready to handle that pressure. He can handle it for us, church. Because you know if we try to handle this stuff on our own, we'll lose our mind. You know if we try to deal with it by ourselves. That's why Paul had to come to the realization that God's grace was sufficient. He had to come to the realization that God's grace was sufficient. Because if he did not come to the realization that God's grace was sufficient, then every waking moment of his life, he was going to be thinking about the thorn. He was going to be feeling the pain of the thorn, the thing that he had to deal with, the thing that he had to go through. I don't know what his thorn was, but guess what? You got a thorn as well. You got something that you are dealing with. I know you thought you was all good. I know you thought you was the best thing since sliced bread. But let me tell you something. You got a thorn. You got something that you are dealing with. Some of us got some lying that we need to deal with. Some of us got some evil spirits that we need to deal with within ourselves. Some of us need to learn how to love one another. Some of us need to learn how to treat one another. All of us have some thorns that we are dealing with. But I want to let you know that you can't deal with it by yourself. And I'm glad this morning that we have not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. But Jesus was in like manner tempted just as we are but he did it without sin simply put he know what you're going through have you ever wondered if anybody cared what you was going through everybody just expects me to do all of this stuff and to be there when they call me and always be ready and available to jump at the drop of a hat when they need this when they need that but then I find myself after giving everybody else the strength that I have, being depleted to help myself when I need strength and when I need encouragement. Church, some of us then took on too much pressure. Some of us have took on so much stuff, we need to let some of this stuff go. Can I tell you, you are not Clark, Clint, Clark Kent. They say, yeah. <laughs> Clark Kent, Clark Kent, yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you, you are not Superman. You are not superwoman. God didn't make you to be superman or superwoman. There are certain things, thank God, that he has given you the strength to be able to handle and to be able to bear. Some of y'all can testify and say, preacher, now I've been through some things that before I went through it, I would have never thought that I was able to make it through that thing. I didn't recognize what kind of pressure I could really handle. I didn't recognize that, hey, I was really able to take a Lincoln and keep on ticking. I was really able that I didn't have to stay down, but I had strength enough to get back up and to fight for another day. And I want to encourage somebody here this morning that may feel like giving up. They may feel like you've done all that you can and there's nothing else that you can do. Well, my Bible tells me that having done all to stand, you just got to keep on standing. You just stand there until God makes a way. You stand until God brings that thing to pass and until he shows up. You stand. Stand there, church. Stand on the word of God. For it is truly able to bring you through. No matter what you're going through this morning, God can handle it. That's the thing about it. All of us may not be going through the same thing, but guess what? We all going through some kind of pressure. Some of us dread even going out of here, going back home, because when we get there, we got to deal with pressure. But we serve a God that is able to help you. Paul, even just like Christ, he had to pray three times. Lord, remove this thorn from my flesh. No. Remove this thorn from my flesh, please. No. Lord, dear Master God in heaven, one of them King James prayers, would you please? 
Lord, I'm down on bending knee and head by, you know, praying, Lord, remove this arm from my flesh. God said, no, no, no. I'm not going to take the thorn away, but I'm going to give you the grace to be able to live with that thorn. And whether you know it or not, the only way you are even able to sit there and look at me right now with the confidence that you have is because of his grace. It's because of his grace. What is the grace of God? Him giving us that stuff that we do not deserve. We don't deserve God's air, but he gives it to us anyway. We haven't lived so good that he should have blessed you this morning to wake up and to know who you were, be in your right mind, but he gave it to you anyway. That's why we sing songs like, thank you. Oh man, we just can't help ourselves because our mind just begins to think about all of the things that we really have to be thankful for. Knowing that we would just take a moment and just count up all the stuff that we have to be thankful for. You know, we'll never leave him. Because every second is something to be thankful for. Every waking moment of your life, you got something to be thankful for. And I'm thankful this morning that I serve a God that sees me in my going through. I'm thankful this morning that I serve a God that sees me where I am and desires to come and help me with what I'm going through, church. So I want to encourage you this morning, don't feel like you are just out there going through by yourself. He's walking with you. He's walking. That's why, that's why the heat ain't been turned up too high, because he's been walking with you. That's why the devil hasn't been able to overcome you as yet. Why? Because God is with you. And if God be for you, if God be for you, what ain't matter who is against you? I got God on my side. You let, you let come what may, man, when I got God on my side, we're already the majority. I'm grateful this morning, church. And you ought to be likewise. That God sees you. If nobody else sees you, if nobody else understands that you're a human just like everybody else. And even though you may be a great encourager, you go through stuff as well. And you know what it's like when everybody else expects you to always be that person? That sometimes you ain't got nobody that you can vent to. You ain't got nobody that you can share with. So you find yourself just sitting there keeping all that stuff to yourself. But if pressure will bust a steel pipe, what do you think it'll do to you? You don't have to live under that pressure. God is willing, ready, and able to alleviate that church. I'm so glad this morning that God loved us enough to not allow us to succumb to the pressures of Satan and sin and the devil. But that if you want to be saved, if you want to live for God, if you want to be a member of the body of Christ, that is available to you. I'm so glad that God thought enough of us before time. Before you even got here, God was thinking about you. Before your mama got here, guess what? God already knew about you and he knew about your mama. Guess what? He had a plan for your lives. And I'm so glad that God loved us enough because guess what? He knew you was going to have a thorn. He knew I was going to have a thorn. He knew we was going to have some things about us. So I'm so glad that even though God knew we would not be perfect individuals, that he still loved us enough to say, you know what? If you will let all of that stuff go and give your life to me and obey my word, guess what? I give you a new life. I give you a new start. That what the Bible said, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He's a new creature. All that other stuff, you may remember it, but guess what? God forgot about it. And I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. You can be a new creation this morning. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, where you've been, what you've been involved in, God is not in the business of bringing up all that stuff. He's in the business of forgiving you of your sins and giving you a brand new start. Maybe there's somebody here that needs a new start this morning. It is available unto you.
And I'm so glad that God has not made it difficult. God has not said that you got to do this and that, that you got to come from this side of the tracks, that you got to be this color or this or that. But whosoever will, he said, let him come. He said, today that you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. If you know you need God this morning, don't harden your heart. God is available and he's ready to change your life if you will give him the opportunity. So this morning, if you desire that chance, if you desire that change in your life, come out here in the word of God. You've heard the word, now my question is, do you believe what it is that you've heard? If you believe what it is that you've heard, are you now willing to repent of your sins? Are you now willing to change your course? Are you now willing to change your actions? Are you willing to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God? And are you willing to be baptized for the remission of your sin? The Bible said, praising God and having favor with all the people that the Lord adds to the church daily, yeah. such as should be saved. Yeah. My brother and my sister, maybe you're here today, you're subject to the invitation, or maybe you're here today and you're already a Christian, but you say, preacher, I'm dealing with some pressure. I don't have to know what your pressure is, I just want to pray for you. I want to ask God to help you with what it is that you have got going on. So if you're here today and you're subject to the invitation, you have that opportunity afforded to you now to respond as you need to, as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior.